Recently, the Green Party um, campaign for the Isle of Wight for the general election 2015. Uh, my name is Bob Keats. I'm the election agent for the Green Party. I was the candidate in 2010. Um, but we are delighted to introduce our candidate for 2015, a much better candidate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vic Stavion. Thank you very much. Vic Stavion. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, it's really good to see so many people here. In fact, I don't know who everybody here is, although hopefully I've got around to have a chat with, with you. So thank you very much for coming. Um, I hope that after today we can go out and lead on from um, everything we've discussed and the things we're going to bring up uh, and lead on to May because we've got 99 days to go. Um, which can sound like a large number, but really, in the whole scheme of things, it isn't. And um, part of me is hoping or wishing that um, I put myself forward earlier, because really, I can see that it's it's ballooning. And even from when I first took this over in October, um, membership on the island has, has tripled, um, and nationally has tripled. And um, people coming to our meetings, again, has tripled. So it's turning into a, a, a sort of different sort of campaign to what I... Initially, initially envisaged, which is fantastic. Um, people coming up to meetings saying, we're here to help. We're here to help. And um, we're having to find things, you know, I mean, we can actually do things now that we didn't think we could do before, um, to do with money, donations, so thank you very much. It, it's really good to see lots of you here today. Um, along with that, there's a whole lot of Green Party policies, and you may have seen in the media in recent days, um, the plethora of policies that Natalie Bennett and other members of the Green Party have had to support and defend. Um, it's a big task to take all those policies and to put them forward to the public in words that are understandable, that are relevant to what's happening today. Because some of those policies have been around for many years um, and they've been taken out of context in a way. But my job is to put them forward. Now, at the moment I'm working full time and I've got three boys that I look after by myself most of the time. So um, I'm doing the most that I can do and um, it's been a great honour. So thank you ever so much for, for letting me be in this vision today. I'm going to put forward six of the policies really that I think are important for the Isle of Wight on the doorstep. And those are the economy, um, education, transport, health, the environment and local government. And it's on those policies that our party is providing a different approach to the other parties. Um, an approach which is for the common good. And you can see that the global crash that we had in 2008, which was before the last election, and the Lib Dem coalition has resulted in a great inequality in our society. Our society is more unequal than it's been in the last 30 years. And the widening gap between the rich and the poor is harming the economy, not just our society. Our economy is 9% according to the OECD. It's 9% smaller than it could have been if we'd actually made it a more equal economy and redistributed our wealth. In the last 30 years, we've been told by government that this trickle-down economics, where the rich pay the less tax and they're going to purchase more, is the solution. And it's becoming clearer and clearer that it's actually this inequality that is curbing our growth. The manifesto for the Green Party is going to be released in the spring. And that's going to lay out carefully the taxation plan. So I'm not going to do that here today. But it's going to include a tax on the wealthiest 1%. But really, it's looking at it from the point of view of what do we need to provide and where we're going to find this money. And the Green Party policies for the islanders that are directly relevant to the islanders are things like a living wage, uh, the abolition of the bedroom tax, and a citizen's income that I was talking about earlier which is there to replace the benefits, the pensions, um, benefits of sick and disabled. And it's been considered by Switzerland most recently. It's not a, a ridiculous idea. It's a, an efficient idea in many respects to do that so that everybody can have a basic level of income that all citizens are entitled to. We need to run the economy with people in mind and move us towards an equal society. And we need to use the economy to, to work for us. In terms of education, I believe I'm unique in the candidates as I've got not just a political stake but a personal and a, and a private immediate stake in our education on the island because I've got three young children 
two at primary school age, one at preschool age. And in two years' time, it's my job to choose a school, a secondary school for my eldest. And at the moment, I have absolutely no idea what school that would be. Um, saying this, I think that the blanket descriptions described by education on the island as um, horrendous, inadequate, appalling, I think are misrepresenting the, the shake-up that we've had to, the teachers have had to undergo and the improvements that they've made since this shake-up. The shake-up was inefficiently managed um, in the last five years and we're, we're suffering the consequences of this. And it's not just me saying that, but Ofsted can see that and um, other people can see how we're improving, but we've got a long way to go. Although we're suffering on the island terms of education, the government have kept very quiet about this because it's the academies that are, are leading our secondary school education behind, and the academies are supposed to be the solution to failing schools. And unfortunately, it's showing that having these private companies based on the mainland running our schools and leaving it unaccountable to the ordinary people, we're left with surplus places, so it's inefficient, not only inefficient, but the results are, are not what we'd hope. It's a mix of academies and a free school and a studio school and we, we don't have the control. And you can see that at the meeting, the public meeting at Riverside last night, we're looking at what we're going to do about our surplus places, we're going to close schools. Um, we need more accountability. And the Green Party aim would be to have these schools under a, a local authority control where we could actually have um, um, a local accountability for that. From my experience in the education sector, I'm a lecturer at the Sixth Form College. One of the biggest issues that hinders progress in our schools is recruitment of staff. Um, our students deserve the best qualified teachers and the recruitment of staff is the difficulties for a whole host of reasons, but one is our expensive and our infrequent transport links with the mainland, which means it's very difficult to teach here unless you live here. So I have somebody who's assisting me um, and giving me some time off to be able to come and do things like this. And he comes from South Sea every day. Um, not only is that expensive, but it's very difficult to do that. But we've tried other people to recruit who've got the same skill set and they're just not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of our transport, last summer we had ferry tickets costing £147 to get on the car from Portsmouth to here. I stayed on the island the whole holiday last summer. I didn't go and see my family, which I normally do in summer holidays. I just couldn't justify it. Um, 14 years of the MP has got us to a worse place than when we started. The prices are more expensive, the service is more infrequent. Um, my mum is saying that when she comes back after a holiday, she'll have to wait an hour and a half to get back and um, when she gets back to Portsmouth. In, it, the Better Ferry campaign isn't working. And although we need to um, put pressure on in those sorts of ways, it's limited when your Member of Parliament is from a party that supports private finance and private companies being involved. I'm not saying that electing a Green Party MP is going to result in a renationalised um, ferry service overnight, but it opens up the options of looking at different sorts of solutions which our current MP is, is unable to do. The same way as um, looking at Island Line trains and the future of the trains. Mason in the County Press a couple of weeks ago were, uh, that the RMP thinks that a solution for Island Line is getting rid of the electric trains and replacing with diesel engines and steam trains willing to ride and thought that everybody on the island would support him in this and it's not a 21st century way of thinking and it's not a way to provide an efficient service and we need to broaden our, our options. So a Green Party MP for the Isle of Wight believe that public transport should be run by the public and not for vast profits and we'll be able to broaden our solutions to look at those. Health, um, along with the economy, is going to be the biggest concern for the general election in May. It's crucial to secure funding for the NHS, to take it forward as the global flagship health authority that it is. We spend in this country about 9% of our GDP on health. In the United States, they spend double that on their private health care. It's, it's not a solution to bring in the private companies because they're taking our taxpayers' money and they're using it for, to provide a service and profits for their shareholders. It's public money going towards private people. Um, involving in that, there's a morass of competition law around this now, and hospitals having to deal with lawyers and, and tendering, we actually should be dealing with, with getting on with the service. 
and you can see that on the Isle of Wight with the recent um, initiative to involve a company called Ryehurst involved in our estates management. Um, although you can say this is a non-clinical service, they are still taking uh, or getting profits from the buildings that, that actually belong to our health authority. It doesn't really stop there either because in Staffordshire, um, Richard Branson and Virgin Care are tendering for a £1.2 billion um, c- cancer and end-of-life care 10-year contract, which the, the money is vast and it's a clinical service and we need to have people to, to stand up in Parliament to say this is actually not what the people wanted. And the people in 2010 did not vote for that. And our Parliament needs to be a lot more representative of the people, some of which you see here today, but I know there are so many more people that, that disagree with the, the direction our NHS is taking. Whether you believe in human-induced climate change or not, uh, the fact remains that fossil fuel power lifestyle is a finite resource. It's a no-brainer that as a nation we have to invest in renewable energy technologies. And we can't leave it too late. And it's for this reason why I'm against fracking on the island. Yes, there's an environmental threat, but actually the bigger threat to me is that by following that, it's a distraction from what we should actually be doing, which is looking for long-term solutions. And uh, a reliance on fossil fuels isn't that. The Isle of Wight, to bring it back to where we are, is a perfectly place to benefit from the investment in jobs in our renewable energy industry. And that's a big focus of the Green Party employment plan, is jobs to combat climate change. We're the sunniest place in the UK, though you wouldn't necessarily know that today. Um, we've got tides surrounding us, we've got the offshore wind farm at Navitas Bay, which could hopefully bring 150 jobs to Yarmouth. We're already a green island, and um, electing a green MP would support the growth in jobs and industry. The dairy industry, um, is particularly close to my heart. I grew up on a dairy farm 15 years. My father left, he was one of the 10,000 dairy farmers who have left in the last 15 years, forced to leave the industry because the bulk buying of the milk, um, putting it again into, into a market with the supermarkets means that although you've got cheap food for customers, it's a huge cost for the food producers and we just do not have um, the money to invest in our farms. So we need to look at protecting dairy farmers, we need to look at small shopkeepers, um, we need to look at the high streets. It's all these things tied up together. The environment, as I see it, isn't just about the countryside, it's about how the countryside impinges on our lifestyles in towns as well. So we need a sustainable solution to the climate change and the threats of the food producers. And this again is a priority for the Green Party. Bringing it back to home is looking at the pop- some of the problems, in fact most of the problems, I think on the Isle of Wight, are due to local government. It's a direct result of the reduction in money from central government to our local authority. And I've got a long list here that I just did from the top of my head when writing this, which was, in the last five years we've seen our tourist information close, we've seen our public toilets close, our local libraries are constantly threatened with closure, There have been mass redundancies, increased parking charges, tendering our countryside. We can see this week the details about tendering the countryside at after marshes and at um, braiding down to the control of third parties because our local government don't have the money. Our school crossing patrols are threatened, our lifeguard services are cut, our sports centres have had the funding removed, there are going to be charges for respite care, a reduction in youth services, cutting budgets for vulnerable people with disabilities, um, the joint partnership with Hampshire Fire and Rescue that we have to undergo again, it's due to money, a removal of funding for the museums and arts, and cuts to essential community bus services that so far on the island we've managed to avoid, but it's looking like it's not possible, and whole communities like at Medina Park, um, down Folly Lane, will be cut off. And these are essential, as I see it, although they're not deemed as statutory according to local government. There are lots more to add to the list. There's £30 million that we have to cut in the next three years, so it's going to be worse. And it's an adequate grant from the local authority. It's a national issue. It needs to be solved on a national level. You know, our... Council leader has tried to go and get money from the national government and it's had a very limited solution in that because it's only at a national level, as a your MP, that I can challenge the narrative of austerity as a solution. 
it's not working. Austerity isn't working. And it's the most vulnerable islanders. It's the elderly, people with disability and care needs who are suffering the most. And as far as I see it, it's essential that the funding cuts to local authorities are, are halted because that is what everybody is dealing with on a day-to-day basis. And all the things I've talked about, the health, absolutely are important. But my personal priority is we need to actually get the money for the buses, for the um, adult social care. These are, these are the things we need, we need. And we need to hold Westminster to account for this. And we need to make Parliament much more representative and stop the attack on services that islanders hold most dear. Because the Isle of Wight is a green island. Much of our businesses, our tourism, our manufacturing are green. We are world class for renewable energy technologies. The area keeps growing with solar, with tidal and with turbine innovations. Visitors travel from all over the world to see our beautiful green spaces, to eat our local produce and to stay in our increasingly sustainable holiday accommodation. To elect a Green Party MP is a fitting stamp on our credentials and our identity. A Green MP for the Isle of Wight. I do urge you all to, to join to build up a campaign and put our island firmly at the national stage at Westminster. The Green Surge has arrived on the Isle of Wight. Thank you. Representation and, and this is what I'm talking about. And even if I mean the initial idea of this campaign was to have a bigger profile on the island, and was because of that bigger profile to get people to stand for our local council, which we've only had Bob stand before, a couple of other people. Yeah, from Brian and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got people who are on the town councils, people on the parish councils, but it was it was looking at that. But actually. We need change on a much bigger scale than that. Yeah. There, are, there, are, there are, whatever we do, however, whatever positions we have on a local level, we, we don't have that on a national level, and it's on a national level we do more representation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask you, what can local people do to help your campaign if they're not to make it? Well, we've started doing a crowdfunder um, appeal, which we've got nearly £500 towards our campaign and we're looking at really um, having a, a presence <laughs> outside of me. We are, we're the biggest constituency in the UK and um, there was one me and there's a number of people here and even more people than 120 members so um, that's one thing you can sort of donate and you can go on our website and there's bank details and so on there. And I think especially in the island it is a viable option um, so yeah passing word of mouth everything that we really can help but we have um, a website we have, um, I'm going to be on the radio last week, and radio next week, and so, so it's basically sharing this message, which we really believe. Okay, there were a couple of other people who wanted to comment. Uh, I had a question on, um, if you were to be elected to the island, uh, it's highly unlikely the whole government's going to be green. Yes. Um, what are you going to do to tackle that imbalance of, of not being in power but wanting to get your policies uh, enacted? Um, it, it depends what sort of situation there is in Westminster. Um, in, in May, what sort of coalition, if there is a coalition. I mean, at the moment we have a coalition of the Liberal Democrats, which is a coalition based on ministerial jobs. But as far as I see, the future of Westminster politics is going to be on policy. So, um, as well as Caroline Lucas has been fantastic by introducing her own um, private members' bills and directing, taking charge of certain aspects of policy, although they were, some might say, minor policy areas that you can have direct influence. But on a on the big issues that count on on education, on health, on transport, on um, foreign affairs, it's voting on those policies to represent the island, almost like being an independent MP in a way, but an independent MP who actually has policies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll take one last point. Very quickly. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, 
it needs to be a very visible campaign, mm -hmm. I feel, because, uh, you know, you've got Andrew Turner and they're always out there. And I think it's vital to use what membership you've got, be it small at the moment, on the eye to get out there yes. and use them as much as you can to be as visible and as verbal as possible. Yes, I mean, I can do yes. the very things um, in terms of the island media with myself, but you're absolutely right, a visible yeah. campaign. I mean, we do have some more visible advertising proposals penciled in, but all that requires money. I mean, those fantastic visible um, advertising penciled in will cost about two thousand pounds. Yes. So it is about we, I mean, we have you know two hundred pounds a year from. So it's all, all based on donations, really. It, it yeah. will be a significantly different campaign from five years ago, and significantly more visible. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's uh, close that. But um, happy for you to come and. Uh, um, shake hands with uh, with Vix and uh, have a general conversation and, and meet the other people who are in the room from the, from the Green Party and from the press and uh, and then this officially launches our campaign with 100 days to go. We'll be meeting next week to plan the more detailed strategy. I think we'll be looking at local centres. We've got enough support in each of the main urban areas on the island for local activity on a frequent basis. We're looking at some major advertising as well. So uh, it will be a very different campaign. But this is a credible campaign. This is not a fringe campaign. This is mainstream. Yes. And all the influence of the Greens has been significant on the main parties who claim to be Green but don't understand. This is different. Fundamentally different. This is now our campaign for significant national influence from the root of Parliament. And thank you very much for coming this morning.